Hey everyone, I'm Miss Jack, and today we're going to talk about physical and chemical changes. So first, I brought with me a piece of paper. What do you notice about this piece of paper? What are some properties of this piece of paper? So maybe the shape. It's rectangular. It's smooth or flat. It's yellow. Yeah, those are all properties of the sheet of paper. Now, what happens if I crumple up the piece of paper? Okay, what are some properties now? It's bumpy, maybe it changes shape. You can talk about it as a circle or a ball. Okay, is it still paper? It's still paper. So I just changed some of the physical properties of it. Now, what if I tear a piece off? What I do? I change the shape. Is it still paper? It's still paper. So those are, again, changing some physical properties. Those are some physical changes to this piece of paper. Now, if I were to write on it, I would change the color, right? But some of you all probably have spilled some water or something on your work before. And what happens to the ink on the paper? It starts to dissolve away, right? So you're not changing it. The substance is still paper, but now it just has some marker on it. Now, what if I... If I were to light this piece of paper on fire, just a bit. Okay, here it is. Can y'all see that? Now, there you go, you can see it a little better like that. Okay, so what just happened? My ash dropped, but now you can kind of see the very edge of it. Maybe if I put this other paper behind it so now is it is that part that I burned is that still paper no it's a new substance so you can see we have a different color change that is not what we added the color we like if you were to write on it, you add that color right not this color this color is a new color as you can tell it's a little um, gray blackish there's some white ash at the top a big portion of it fell off. What else happened whenever I lit it on fire and then blew it out? It produced the smoke, the gas. Okay, so how can we know for sure when there's a change that it is a physical or a chemical change? Well, I'll show you a little trick. So on your next piece of paper, get out a sheet of paper, get out your notebooks and follow along. So this is going to be our evidence evidence of a chemical reaction that's your title of your page I'm trying to write neat for you all okay evidence of a chemical reaction so one way that we can remember this is city girls only love their phones. Now, what do all those letters stand for? Well, let's think about our piece of paper. When we produced gas, we burned the paper. What happened? What changed? We had a color change. So this is going to be a new color. So not a color that we like if I write on this board with the blue marker, is that a new color? No, that's blue <laughs> turning into blue. I, maybe it's a little different color for you, but yeah, so that's not a new color. Now, the G, what else happened? What happened around the air? This was a gas is produced. So we can also see that maybe in liquids that bubbles are produced. Now, the O, hmm, if you were here next to me and I lit the paper on fire, what would happen? Would you be able to smell it? Yeah, so it produced an odor. Now, what else produces an odor whenever you're changing something? Maybe if you're in the kitchen, maybe you're making a cake or some cookies, mixing it all up, you put it in the oven and you can smell it. That is a chemical change. You can't get it back to the way it was. Now, L, that is going to be our light. 
So think about like a glow stick. That is a chemical change because you can't get it back to the way it was. Now, sometimes you may put a glow stick in the freezer. What does that happen? Why, why would you do that? Yeah, so the, that slows down the process, but you can't get the glow stick back the way it was before you mix those chemicals. When you break a glow stick, you can hear the cracking. That's because the tube inside is breaking, mixing those chemicals to produce the light or the glow. The next one is a temperature change. So that is the same as a color. It's not something that you add. If I go put a pot of water on the stove and turn the stove on, what's gonna happen to the water? It's gonna start getting hotter. It's gonna maybe even boil. Is that a temperature change that happened because of the reaction or that I added? That's a temperature change that I added. So when we talk about a chemical change with a temperature change, that is something when you mix two things together, the temperature just changes. Not something that you add or you change. The next one is going to be a precipitate. This is when you have a liquid plus a liquid and you get a solid. Say what? Yeah, that one's a little different. Uh, one thing you can do, if you've seen this before, you can mil mix milk with vinegar, and then you start getting that chunky milk. That's a solid, right? I know, kind of gross. But that is a chemical reaction because you can't get that milk back to the way it was. It's now spoiled milk. All right, and that is evidence for a chemical reaction or a chemical change. So remember when you're thinking about this, all of these are going to produce what? makes a new substance. So when I talked about that boiling water, if I were to boil the water, it's gonna start evaporating, right? That's gonna turn into a liquid, into a gas. Now, is that a new substance? Is it still water? It is, it's just now in the gas form. So. A state change is not a chemical change. It's still the same substance. It's just in a different state of matter. Same thing if you go put a cup of water and go take it to the freezer. Is it a new substance? No, it's still water. You can melt that ice cube or melt the water and it's gonna go back into the liquid form. So that is not a chemical change. That's just a physical change. These are evidence of when you have a chemical change or chemical reaction. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.